All right, welcome to the back nine at the Wyndham Club. Uh, this is part two of my round of hickory golf here at the Wyndham Club. If you haven't watched part one yet, which is the front nine, uh, the link is on the lower left there. As I mentioned in part one, I'm using my primary hickory set, which is two woods, five irons, and a putter. I'll get into some of these clubs uh, a little bit deeper later. And I'm using a Titleist True Field low compression ball. Playing from the green tees, and on the back nine, it's a little bit shorter than the front, but three of the four longest holes are back here. Number 10 is a very short par three with a well-protected green. This is a tough distance for me. Uh, it's, I'm kind of in between clubs here, so I'm going with my 36 degree McGregor um, flanged mashy, but I'm choking up a little bit on it. My mistake here was aiming right at the pin, which was on the right side of the green. And that didn't give me a lot of room for air, so I ended up pushing this tee shot right and into the trees. Fortunately, I was able to find it pretty quick in this ditch. And I'm um, using my Tom Stewart 47 degree mashy niblick to try to punch this out. I was real happy with how that came out of there. And actually gave me a legitimate shot to uh, save par here. I really thought that one was going to drop. That would have been a nice way to start the back nine. Uh, but a bogey, and I'm still fairly satisfied with my putting. Number 11 is a par 5 from the green tees, but if you're playing the par 70 black tees, uh, this is actually 20 yards shorter for you, but it plays as a 465 par 4. Pretty happy with that contact. Um, from the green tees, you've got a lot of room straight ahead here to get your tee shot close to the fairway. It's a good opportunity to take a look at my primary club off the tee, which is a Walter Hagen splice neck brassy made by Louisville Golf. Someone recently asked me on Instagram what my preference was between replicas and uh, original authentic clubs. And it basically for me comes down to woods and irons. I like replica woods because it's one of the trickier clubs to work on. And I like having the confidence uh, off the tee with a club I know is not going to be broken easily. Uh, and with irons and putters, I like doing the work on those hickory clubs. I'm learning how to do more. And finding and repairing those clubs and making them playable again is one of my joys in hickory golf. Eventually I'll get just as comfortable working on brassies uh, as I am irons. But um, until then, Louisville Golf makes an outstanding replica and I can't recommend their clubs enough. So that last shot put me just short of the green on the right side, but set up uh, another shot I'm getting pretty comfortable with, which is the short pitch uh, over trouble. I'm using the 47 degree Tom Stewart mashy niblick here. And I was really happy with where this ball settled. And considering how fairly consistent I'd been with my putter up to this point, I was feeling pretty good about my opportunity here. but somehow I totally misread that fairly straightforward putt. I don't think it moves much. I just didn't see that line at all. And um, yeah, this is where the hole kind of fell apart for me within 10 feet. So disappointing double bogey there. It takes us to number 12, which is a short par 4 that looks drivable based on distance, but the bunker and pond near the green pretty much require that you uh, get yourself in position for a layup. It's 
So I ended up pulling this tee shot. This, that was the Louisville Golf 21 degree Jack White spoon. It's just kind of a magnet over on this left side for me. And uh, I think a lot of people end up over here. You might be taking a little bit of distance off your second shot from over here, but you, it's definitely more difficult having to navigate the bunker um, in front. And no idea what happened there. I had a decent lie. I was using my 36 degree flanged mashie. Uh, just didn't work out. So that leaves me with a short pitch, even more difficult shot. Again, with the 47 degree mashie niblick. But just like the last hole, put a confident swing through the ball, and I was happy with the result. Greens were running pretty good on this particular day. Um, they had been aerated probably a week and a half prior. Uh, they generally run pretty quick uh, for a public course, which I like. It takes us to number 13, which is a dogleg right par 5. Pretty straightforward hole here. Um, if you find yourself off on the right side, you might have some tree trouble. There's plenty of room on the left, but um, I think a lot of people try to cut this corner a little more than they should, including myself. Even though that started out toward the center, came over the top on it a little bit and ended up flaring it right. If you're going to go right, you want to get past the trees and into the seventh um, fairway, which is next to you. Uh, my ball took off a little bit but didn't get as far as I would have liked and so I ended up on this mound on the right side of the seventh fairway and didn't have much of a play here other than to go straight ahead on the seventh hole and see if I could get an opening back into the fairway toward the green. Unfortunately tree line's just pretty dense up here and so my best play was just to go right back into the fairway without any extra distance. I got a little unlucky here too on this punch. Caught it a little too clean. Went through the fairway and uh, actually took a few minutes to find it in this rough. This is probably the thickest rough I found all day. But it ended up turning out okay. Because I ended up hitting one of my best shots of the day with my 36 degree flange mashie and got it close enough to give myself a shot at par here. which I took advantage of. So feeling good after that, heading into number 14, which is another par three. This is 160 yards with an elevated green. It's the ideal hole on this course for me to use my Gibson deep face mashie, which is 30 degrees. And I have no trouble turning this club over and putting a draw on the ball. So I had good contact here, but I turned it over a little too much ended up on the left hand side of the green. I added this club to my bag because I thought that it would be the ideal club for hitting out of rough because the deep face but um, I haven't found as consistent results with that um, as I have off the tee from about 150 to 160 yards so that's my go-to club on most par threes. So that tee shot left me with a difficult pitch here. The green slopes away from me short-sided and I gave that a little too much as well. So ended up scooting that across the green and um, used the putter technique that I showed you in part one on hole number four. Just a short little chip with the putter and this result was much better than it was on number four. I um, was able to basically save bogey with that last shot. Just a little bit of work here left. So all things considered, not too disappointed with that bogey. That brings up number 15, which is a 420 yard par four. One of my favorite holes on the course, because um, you can just let it rip off the tee and then let it rip again with your second shot. And uh, for some reason, I'm pretty comfortable on this hole. And this ended up being one of my best tee shots of the round. 
This also is a good camera angle to show my stance, which looks a little awkward at times, but what I'm trying to do is close it to the ball to encourage a draw. And I've found the most consistent results off the tee with that setup. On a good day, I'm usually hitting that club about 225. Um, so I'm not a big hitter, uh, but I like the accuracy the splice neck provides. And uh, from what I've read, Harry Varden and Walter Hagen uh, stuck with splice neck drivers well after socket heads were available because they liked that accuracy even if the socket head gave them more distance. That was another nice shot with the Louisville Golf 21 degree jack white spoon. This ball ended up just short of the green on the right side. Set up another short chip for the 47 degree Tom Stewart Mashy Niblick. I think in the summertime that chip would have ended up a little bit closer to the hole. Uh, aerated greens probably slowed that down a little bit. Uh, left me with a little bit of work here for a par. Real happy with that stroke, but it slowed down just enough at the end to miss the hole. That brings us to 16, which is another long par 3, but this one starts from an elevated tee, and you've got a mound uh, It's kind of blind off the tee, but it's right of the green, so pretty much anything on the right side is going to funnel toward the green. So I'm using my jack white spoon, I'm hoping to get it on that right side. And that's exactly where I put it. So step one on this hole, get it close to the green, if not on it. And uh, I was able to do that. So I found myself just about pin high, but in some pretty thick rough. So I decided to try to use my Gibson flange niblick to chip this out. But I got really good contact on that ended up skimming it right over the hole and over the green. So now I'm looking at another long return chip uh, using that putter chip that I discovered this round. I'm hoping for the same result as I got on 14. But I learned that's probably not the best club to use if you've got a chip shot that you need to get over elevation. So that came up well short and now I've got a long putt uphill try to save bogey. But not even the music of Peter Sotero wafting over from the clubhouse patio was enough to propel that weak putt to the hole. And now I've got this putt for a double bogey. So yeah, not much more to say other than that was a bummer. That takes us to 17, which is a par 5 that plays even longer than its 540 yards. Uh, this hole was completely redesigned within the last five years, and uh, other people that I've talked to who have played this course before and after do not like this hole. Um, I'll admit that it stands out in a weird way uh, from the rest of the holes, I'm not sure what it is exactly, it just feels out of place to me. Um, but I'm getting more used to it each time I play it. As you can see, there's another tee shot across the road, the same road as uh, on number one. Uh, there's a lot of room here. Uh, this was actually the first time that I found myself on the left side of the fairway, um, which gives you a little bit of a shorter route to the hole, but it's still really long. Um, the second shot is somewhat blind. You're not quite sure where you're going to end up, but you know where you're supposed to go. The rough was pretty thin over here, so I was able to use the jack white spoon 
uh, and got really good contact on that. So far, so good. So I think this is where the hole starts to break down for people um, because after two pretty decent shots, you're left with this third shot where you really need to shape it around the bend. Um, I ha I'd hit a bad shot here. I had, uh, too much grass between the ball and the club face and um, ended up flaring it to the right, which makes this hole even harder. Uh, but I, I don't know, I can't speak for everyone, but it, it does feel like by this point you should be seeing the green or having a pretty good idea where the green is and it's still around this bend even further. So finally, um, with this next shot, you start to see where you, you can get up to the green. And again, I'm, it may sound like I'm complaining here. I'm really not. Um, it, this hole's just taken me more than, than most to get used to. So Mashy Niblick here and uh, ended up with a nice shot that settled just on the front edge of the green. And I, I'm pretty sure this is the best I've ever played this hole. So um, I'm, I'm definitely getting more comfortable with it each time and, and understanding its nuance better. Um, but I can see why people don't like it. I remember really trying to focus on making this putt. So I was glad when it went in. And that takes us to 18, which is a par four, 400 yards with a blind tee shot. Um, and you're, you're aiming for, in this instance, I was aiming for where the sun was still shining on the tree. There's basically a shoot uh, that goes between the two tree lines that you wanna try to get your tee shot through. Again, my stance here and my pre-shot routine are uh, trying to encourage a draw and an inside to out swing. And while I may have come over the top a bit, I still got pretty square contact on the ball and uh, put it right where I wanted to in the middle of the fairway. Blind tee shot can be a little tricky when you're trying to hit your second. You see me look back toward the tee there, and that's because a uh, tee shot behind me had just landed right behind my camera. So I'm trying to get out of here pretty quick. Uh, but in spite of that, he had a real nice shot here with my Tom Stewart 24 degree two iron. This is the last club in my bag to show you. Uh, I use this club from about 180 yards to 160 yards. Uh, so it's my gap club between my 21 degree Jack White spoon and 30 degree Gibson deep face mashy. So this last approach illustrates well why I like playing hickory golf at Wyndham Club. Um, they recognize that they have a golf course designed in the 1920s and they maintain it as such. So I like the fact that uh, they keep the fairways about as tight as they can running into the, the green so that you can do these kinds of run-up shots. And I talk more about their maintenance philosophy in the course profile I wrote about Wyndham Club on my website at hickoryhacker.com. The uh, link for that is in the description of this video. This was another putt that I was really trying to focus on because I would have loved ending on a par, but it just came up a little short. So this tap in for bogey will wrap up my round of Hickory Golf at Wyndham Club, my home course here in Connecticut. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed what you saw and will like and subscribe.